everybody to another video of mine. I'm the IT guy. Uh, recently, it was International Privacy Day, and uh, you know, 2019 is apparently all about privacy right now. Uh, a lot of people care about their privacy. On the news, it's full of, uh, you know, they are pretty paranoid about their privacy nowadays. But you know, it has been like this for years, and suddenly everybody's just, you know panicking about what's going on with all my data um, but anyhow I just wanted to show you a few quick tips on how to uh, increase your privacy online uh, of course the best way to start is just switching to a Linux based operating system um, anything besides Android of course which is also a Linux based operating system but um, you know Windows uh, does a lot of stuff on your computer uh, that uh, you know shouldn't be happening like putting apps on your computer uh, you know advertisements on your computer itself you're paying for an operating system and still Windows is putting stuff on your computer you did not ask for uh, that you know is one thing about uh, Windows that's pretty annoying but also the way they you know they watch every step you make on the computer they they are looking at your uh, app activities and you know they are using that information to uh, target you your to, to target the ads more specifically towards you which might, might sound like a good thing you know you're getting advertisements for things that you want to see but you know in a way it's not really nice knowing that they're pretty much just uh, spying on you. I don't like to use the word spying, um, but in a way it is spying, you know, they are watching everything you are doing. Um, but anyways, let's start off by going into the operating system itself. So uh, in Windows, in, my, in Microsoft Windows 10, there are some settings you can change in the start menu. Quickly get over here go to the settings menu this is the first thing you'll need to do uh, and we'll have to go to the privacy section and the first thing you need to do this is of course already turned off uh, on my computer but you'll have to turn off the uh, advertising ID so you have to turn this off and this will make sure that apps will no longer be able to uh, read your activity so you know, as it says, let apps use advertising ID to make ads more interesting to you based on your app activity. Turning this off will uh, will disallow or disable the feature that allows the Windows operating system to spy on your app activities. So that's one thing uh, you can disable. Uh, this is also an op option you can disable. This has to do with regional things. Uh, but you don't have to disable it because we can just go ahead over to location and we can just turn off uh, right here if you go ahead and click change you can disable the the, 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 the complete ability of your computer to uh, give away your location so now if you have a desktop computer do take note that they can still see what country, what country you're in um, based on the IP address that you use so the IP address of your ISP uh, will you know somehow give away in what country you are uh, but we can also go around that by using something called a VPN but that's something we're going to talk about later in the video so bear with me here so this is turned off right now so uh, this is something you can turn off so they will no longer be able to track your uh, your uh, location and this is handy for things like if you have uh, an all-in-one tablet often these all-in-one uh, ta tablets the, these uh, two-in-one tablet laptop things they have a GPS um, a GPS device built in and this will make sure that that GPS will no longer be uh, able to you know hand out the locations of the device so this is one thing to increase your privacy just you know disabling the lo location uh, access of the, of, the, of the computer itself okay um, let's go ahead and close that the first so now we're going into uh, the next thing we need to do and that is to be sure to be using an open source browser like Firefox 
is one I can recommend always, Firefox, or uh, this is also one, Brave Browser. So the Brave Browser is also an open source uh, web browser with an ad blocker built in. Um, and anything like Chromium, if you want, uh, this is actually Chromium is an open source implementation of um, Google Chrome. So if you use Google Chrome right now, um, this is actually an open source implementation of Google Chrome. And this will be you know, something you can use also. Uh, and it will not have any of the Google Chrome things built in. So let me quickly open up Google. Quick, oh, what am I saying? I'm not Google Chrome. Let me quickly open up uh, Chromium over here. So you'll see it's just a bare browser. There we go. It looks exactly like Google Chrome. Um, but as you can see, you cannot log into the, so the um, Google Chrome services are not enabled on here. And it's just the, it's just the engine that runs um, Google Chrome but without all the googly things on there. So this is something you can also um, uh, you can also consider downloading as well. There are a ton of other, um, I think it was like, what was it? Um, I think Waterfox is also, see Water, Waterfox is also like uh, an implementation of, uh, of, of Firefox. I have never used uh, Waterfox to be honest, but it's also one of the many examples of an open source browser um, that will not interfere with your privacy as much as a, a web browser like Google Chrome or um, Microsoft Edge will, or even Safari for that matter. So uh, things to consider getting an, uh, an open source browser. Uh, so that brings us to the next thing you can do. And that next thing is log out of all of your online services. And really guys, I mean this. Uh, even though you are not signed into, um, let's say the Google uh, services, say so you're, you're logged out of the Google services, uh, but you are logged into, let's say Outlook. If you go to Outlook and you log in automatically, that means that you are signed in by default on the Microsoft online services. And also, if you're browsing the web and there is any chance that there is somehow an ad tracker from Bing search, definitely they will also track your um, your email address and that way they can also send you, uh, they can also send that data over to third parties and give away the information that you searched online using Bing search because Bing search is of course uh, coupled to the Microsoft online services. So that's one thing you should be uh, considering also is signing out of all your online services. And, you know, even things like Facebook, you know, if you're browsing the web and you're watching anything online, um, you should be looking out for things like, um, and let me close this up here. You should be looking out for things like Facebook because they are also always tracking. And the best thing of course is just getting off Facebook, but you know, I'm no saint. I still use Facebook because it's pretty handy to keep in touch with friends and stuff like that. So, uh, unfortunately, that keeps us, you know, on Facebook. But, you know, that's all up to you. You can choose whatever you do with that. Now, um, I was talking about the online services. Now, the next thing you should consider is using another search engine. Uh, I would suggest you use this one over here, DuckDuckGo, uh, is, as it says, the search engine that does not track you. And it's simply, it's simply just that. So if I type in cats over here, I'm going to get cats. If I'm going to type in cats in Google, I'm also going to get cats. But then when I go on, you know, whatever website uh, that has ads, it will show me ads for cat toys and cat food and 
things like that. So that's the difference between being tracked and not being tracked. This will definitely uh, enhance your privacy by a big, big, big amount. So if you're using DuckDuckGo, um, you know, keep using it because these guys can really use it because, you know, the more people going to use DuckDuckGo, the better for them, uh, the more popular DuckDuckGo gets, the better their search results will be because I must admit if you're searching in your own language, like if I, uh, my native language is Dutch, if I would search something on DuckDuckGo in Dutch, that would be uh, a bit more difficult for me to uh, find results because DuckDuckGo is not that well optimized for any other languages than uh, English. So keep that in mind. So the more you use DuckDuckGo, the better for them. Uh, that's, that will definitely help them uh, improve the, uh, the platform of DuckDuckGo. So, you know, give it a try. So a final way to um, increase your internet privacy is by using a VPN server. Uh, some people just use a proxy server and I'll just explain what the difference is between a proxy server and a VPN server. So basically a proxy server, what will a proxy server do? It will just, uh, your, your PC will connect to the proxy server and the proxy server will connect to the internet. So that's basically what happens. So your IP address is hidden. So the proxy server shows its IP address, but it does not show your PC's IP address. You know, there are some proxy servers who do that, but most of them are privately uh, are private, so they will not show your IP address. Um, but that's something that the VPN server will do as well. So the VPN server stands for Virtual Private Network. And what it will basically do is will do the same thing as the proxy server. It will hide your IP address, uh, but it will do something more than that. It will also uh, encrypt all the traffic that is going on from your computer to the internet. So most servers are already encrypted by something like uh, the SSL certificate that you can see over here. But this will add another layer of encryption. And encryption is just basically a mathematical um, formula where the information is being run through so it comes out completely unreadable on the other end. And the only way to read that information is if you have the encryption key. And of course, uh, being the VPN client of the server, you have that encryption key on your computer within the VPN client that is installed on your computer. And that's a way that the information that leaves and comes into your computer is being encrypted so other parties other than the people who have that encryption key cannot read that information that is going in and out of your computer. So that's basically how a VPN server works and I can definitely recommend it. So here's a few of them. Uh, NordVPN is one of the VPN ser services I know. Uh, private internet access is one of them and then we have uh, hide my ass is another vpn server uh, together with uh, let's just remove these spaces over here hide my ass.com so hide my ass and surfshark is also one and they're all based on the open vpn technology uh, this is the open vpn technology so if you're a computer whiz kid you can try to uh, you know, rent a VPS server and uh, put a VPN server on there. Uh, and if you do not know what any of those things mean, I would suggest you use one of the pre uh, one of the pre-made uh, VPN services like uh, Hide My Ass and uh, NordVPN or uh, private internet access stuff like that. But I might do a video on open VPN servers. You know, it's pretty cool to make one yourself. It's pretty easy actually. Also. Uh, so I might do one in the future because, you know, some people might be interested in that. So anyways, uh, that was the video. Uh, I hope it helped you out, guys. And if it did, please leave a like and a comment below. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.